So what is violence? Um, the common definition of violence is involving physical force that's intended to hurt, damage, or kill someone. However, Johan um, Galtung's definition is that it's not limited to physical violence, but it instead defines violence as the cause of the difference between the potential and the actual. Um, basically between what could have been and what it is. Um, suddenly, the definition of violence encompasses so much more than physical acts of harm. And it includes the intangible, such as social structures. Um, structural violence can be carried out as an unevenly, uh, as unevenly distributing resources or implementing laws and policies that can benefit, benefit one group or oppress another. Um, African Americans, they are a frequently oppressed group and they're often uh, victims of structural violence. Um, for instance, African Americans are often isolated to low income areas. One way this is done is achieved through gerrymandering. Um, and that's when politicians, which are coincidentally white politicians, um, they intentionally draw district boundaries to minimize the influence um, that low income black voters can have on an election. And that keeps the those politicians, those rich, white, affluent politicians in office. Um, and those are the politicians that are, you know, distributing the resources and making the policies and whatnot. So it's not a coincidence that it is the African American community that are often victims of structural violence when we consider those that are in power. Um, since they distribute the resources, um, some of those resources are things like education. Um, the education system is a, an example of structural violence. Um, lower income neighborhoods are, you know, they receive a lower quality education than higher income, than higher income um, neighborhoods would. Um, there's a statistic that says that only 13% of African Americans um, receive a secondary education. And th that's talking about those that are in the low income areas. Um, they're isolated to those areas. So there's less chances for them to go on to college because they're stuck in this cycle of poverty. Um, and because there's a lack of educational opportunities, that leads to um, decreased employment opportunities. And that just prevents, you know, the African-American community or members of the community from overcoming poverty. Again, it keeps them isolated. Um, it keeps them stuck in those low-income areas and they're not able to move out. They're not able to succeed and, and overcome all of these barriers and systems that are keeping them oppressed. Um, on top of all of this, African-Americans are incarcerated five times the rate um, than white people. Um, the correlation between poverty and incarceration is actually an unshocking one when we take into consideration, um, <laughs> when we take into the consideration of the systems that are in place that cause it. Two thirds of African American inmates in custody have an annual income that is less than half of what's considered the poverty line. Um, and that is crazy. 75% um, of inmates that are in jail are in jail because they cannot afford bail. Um, they have two choices. They can either sit in jail until their trial date or they can plea out. Um, here's a fact is that 90% of the inmates do take a plea deal um, because of their limited options. Uh, regardless if they're innocent or guilty, they take the deal just so they can get out of jail and resume their life. Um, and, but once they plead guilty, um, they're unable, you know, they have a criminal record. And so they already have a limited uh, amount of employment opportunities. But with that, um, with that criminal record, you know, their employment opportunities are further reduced. You know, the effect is compounded. Um, 
And then they're stuck in this, in this cycle of perpetual structural violence. There's all these systems keeping them in place and then they, they get out of jail or do what they have to do to get back home and they're stuck in, you know, in that community. They're stuck, you know, living in poverty. They're stuck with their low quality educations. They don't have the resources they need to succeed and not struggle. Um, before taking this class, if you were to ask me what violence was, I would have given you what the common definition is. What you type into Google and what they tell you violence is, that's what I would have thought it was. It's, you know, it's the physical violence that caused actual harm and it's the psychological violence that causes mental torment. Um, I would have never considered how social systems, that they can be defined as violent. Um, which frankly is problematic. It's problematic that myself as a white woman that I would not make that connection, that I would not see how damaging these systems can be and how oppressing they can be to certain groups of people. Um, I just wasn't aware of how violent this form of oppression is. And if only we could get everyone to become aware then maybe we would have a shot at achieving true peace. If we can fix our social systems so that they don't greatly benefit one group and not the other, then maybe we would have a shot at, at achieving true peace because it's everywhere. If we use um, Galtung's def definition of violence, then violence is everywhere we look and we should not overlook it. We should not dismiss it because it's not affecting us, because it's not affecting the group or the class that we're a part of. Um, yeah. I don't know what else to say.